Hey everybody, welcome to Seasons Leadership Podcast, where we're transitioning into summer from spring here in the Northern Hemisphere of the world. Spring represents awakening to a new energy, creativity, and the opportunity to elevate our thinking. And that's what we're trying to do here today. We're gonna to continue to bring you actionable advice to inspire you to explore new possibilities, clarify your vision, and start your new plan to improve your leadership and life today. Thank you for joining me, Debbie Collard, and my co-host, Susan Ireland. As certified leadership coaches and co-founders of Seasons Leadership, we share a vision to make excellent leadership the worldwide standard, which drives us to partner with teams, individuals, and organizations to increase and accelerate leadership excellence, a specific skill that helps leaders successfully achieve high levels of performance. You can learn more about this at seasonsleadership.com. You've experienced plenty of examples of mediocre or bad leadership. Join us in making positive leadership the norm rather than the exception. By listening and engaging in the discussions featured on this podcast, you help us bring leadership excellence to the world. Thank you for joining us. Today, we're talking to Patricia Zinnaker, and you might remember Patricia. We talked to her back in October 2021, season two, episode nine. So, Patricia, you know, you were one of our first guests. So it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it is. I can't, and I can't believe it's been like that long ago. It just feels like, like just it was like yesterday, yesterday, actually. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it does to me too. Well, so I'm just going to do a short bio here, but uh, you moved from Germany to Asia at the age of 21. And you built up companies in Hong Kong and Singapore while studying full-time linguistics and psychology. You know, just a few things, right? <laughs> you lived the startup life 24-7, which resulted in burnout at 27. So that describes your life, you know, too packed, I guess. If, I would say abundant, right? You have a lot <laughs> of things going on. Um, and you've, and since then you've published a book, you have now a new podcast since we talked to you. So we want to hear, no, we want to hear more what's going on. Tell us what's new with you. <laughs> what's going on? Well, that's a big question because actually so much is going on, but it was interesting when you just share, like, I mean, it's my life, of course I know it, but I listened to it and it was like, Yep. Okay. That's really a lot. Actually, when you like hear it from somebody else and half a year ago, I turned 30 and people were like, oh, great. So how old, you know, are you now? And I'm like 30. And they're like, no, maybe 40. You know what you experience in your survive. And I'm like, no, believe me, it's 30. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, so actually, I'm oh, sorry, Debbie. When we're teenagers, we want people to think we're older, right? But yeah, thirty probably not so much. <laughs> but you know, thirty is a great age, and I mean, I'm I'm totally fine. I know people who do not enjoy celebrating their birthday, but I believe it's great to celebrate every birthday because every reason to celebrate is great. So no matter how old everyone gets, it's just something I really enjoy. Absolutely. Right. Well, Patricia, you know, I want to I want to go back on this because it is, you know, you you are so busy, you've accomplished so much in your short life. Um and but you did have a personal breakdown in 2020. And so this is this is kind of refocused you and now you deal with companies to to build resilient teams and you focus on mental health as a core value. Um but it still sounds to me like you're still super busy. What's the difference? <laughs> well, you know, I love being busy and I love to work. So that's why I, I hope and I think that's a thing that will never change. But the difference is now I know when my alarm bells go off and say like, well, stop it, please slow down, relax a little bit. So it's not that I rush until to the end and then I'm like, oh, sh I got a breakdown. It's more like, okay, it's been a lot. So maybe have a lazy day, you know, relax a little bit, do something, I don't know, other than work and then come back again. So that's the thing I was struggling after burnout, actually. It's when people came to me and told me, yeah, now, you know, just relax. Take forever until you work again. Do nothing. I'm like, hell no, I got to do so many things. <laughs> and I remember when I took my time off and went to Italy for a few months, just, you know, to, to, recharge my batteries to go through the breakdown with my therapist and all that stuff 
I came back home with a book. And she's like, really? I sent you off for a timeout to do nothing. And you come home with a finished book. Like, that's not the plan. And I was like, true, that was not the plan, but that's just something that happened. So, you know, there's so much stuff going on and things coming up that I don't want to stop. It's more like that I know now how to focus and burnout never comes from the hours you spent working. And I mean, you both know it, right? You have really a lot on your plate as well. And you worked so much as well. But burnout comes, and I really believe that from the disability to recharge means like people do not know how do I recharge? How do I relax? How do I enjoy life? And there are people who work so many hours and they're totally fine. And then there are people who do not even work that much, but tend to yeah, experience a burnout. So wh where does it come from? And that's the thing. Are you able to recharge? Are you able to relax? And that's the part I learned. So yes, I'm still running and I'm still hustling, but on a, let's say on a healthy way, in a healthy way. So Patricia, the question that brings up for me is, um, cause people often tell me you have no idea how to relax that be, but I do know how to relax <laughs> and I know what things relax me, but how did you discover what those were for yourself? Well, that's a tough question. And first of all, everyone is different. That's so important. When people ask me for like a standard recipe, like what should I do? Well, sorry, I don't know because every person is totally different. And that's the, the joy of my work as well, because I get to know so many people and so many different um, ways to recover, to recharge, to enjoy. And so when you ask me, how did I find out? Well, I had the breakdown and I really left everything behind in Germany. I went for a few months to Italy on a lonesome horse ranch in the middle of nowhere, like really in the middle of nowhere, some wild boars and stuff, but that's it. <laughs> and all I did was really chopping wood, taking care of the horses, going out for hacking, something like that. But you know, only things I really could feel that was super important for me because my work is a lot online. So I, of course, see the result if I, I don't know, get a notification or a message and that's great, but I cannot feel it. So when I chop the wood, I, I you know, could take in my hands and know, oh, wow, there was a tree and now it's chopped wood for the winter. And that was something that helped me a lot. And then I also got back to my old hobbies. So I restarted again playing table tennis, playing the piano and did stuff I really enjoyed during school time. And I tried everything out. That's the great joy of it, right? You can try out whatever you want. And I tried it a lot and figured out that's still the stuff I really love. And since then I got back and restarted it. Yeah. So um, just to add something onto that, it sounds from when you're telling the story that you discovered how to recharge and what's important to you through just being. You're on this ranch in the middle of nowhere. You're just living, you're just being. Exactly, and that's when people are too motivated to get or to, to be part or to um, start their personal development. If you're too much, I don't know, stuck in it, it will not develop. So you need to be open and let it go, let it flow. And that was super hard for me because I always was like, if you really want to have something, you're going to get out there and work for it. And sometimes, sometimes there's luck. But if you are not open to it, and if you're too busy, you will never see that luck coming by your way. So what I learned is that not everything must be hard work. Not everything must be the complicated way. Sometimes, you know, it's the easy way and you can just relax and joy and still get it. And so, yeah, I think that's the part. Be excited be ambitious but not too much that you're too focused too stuck so you don't see what's going on right and left of you you know it's also what's coming up for me is you said you're online a lot of what your work is is online and it also feels like it's probably in your head yeah and when you went to italy you got into your body exactly yes yeah, you were chopping wood. I mean, that's very, uh, you it's know, what is that? physical, yeah. physical, 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 and it's visceral and you can feel it and you got more in touch maybe with how you were feeling in your body and not just in your head, which I know for me, it's, it's sometimes that's hard for me too, because I'm a lot in my head, but if the more I get in my body and pay attention 
to how I'm feeling, I think the more grounded I get. That's a very nice thing you said, the more you feel it. And that's the part I, I missed because I learned not to listen to my body anymore, to my inner voice. My former business partners were like, oh no, you got to do this. You got to do this. We got to go there. So I was totally focused on tack, 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 tack. But I forgot my inner voice. So I knew it was somewhere deep inside me, but you know, I just put it aside. And this is what brought me into burnout. And now what I learned and what you just shared is listen to your inner voice, listen to your body, listen to yourself. Actually, we know a lot of things to what we like, what we don't like. Most of the times we already know how to decide. It's just that we do not dare to listen. And that's the thing I can really only recommend it to everyone listening to the podcast. Just believe in yourself and, and listen to your inner voice, to your body, just to yourself. And you will realize a lot how, yeah, it's intuitive, I would say, but how it's way more easier, easygoing. Yeah, easygoing, I think, is the, the word to describe it best. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's a lot of intelligence in our body, totally and in our in intuition, and we just need to trust it. Totally. And you know what? In Italy, what I realized is I tried not to take my laptop and my mobile phone with me okay i didn't make it because you know i wrote my book and all this stuff but i didn't use the internet so this means i had it at least so i could type and i could write i could take pictures and all that stuff that was fine but i wanted to have really time for myself not listen to the radio not talking to people and of course uh, the horse owner i saw him every second day maybe so of course i had a little bit of interaction but that's the way I didn't get distracted from anything out there. There was no advertisement. There was no other person. There was nothing. It was just me. And this is hard. So really just spending the time with yourself, with nothing that can distract you. So, I mean, that's when you really get to know yourself. And a lot of people start crying because it's so intense and so emotional and that's totally fine. So just cry, just feel it and, and let it go, you know, or let it, let it out. That's totally fine. Because once you've done this and one, my therapist helped me a lot with that to get to know you, to get to know maybe what made you cry or what makes you happy or actually, how do you feel? What does it feel like to be you? Once you know that it will make everything easier in your life until today, really every day. I'm so thankful, not for having a burnout, but for this way out and for this experience, because now I can really say I know myself so well. So whenever I have a business partner or any project coming up, <laughs> I start and I just give them kind of a list like, I like that, I don't like this. When this happens, I react like this. So really kind of a manual, just so they know that it's not something they did. It's just something like my core values or something that triggers me. So they know everything because I know it. But how many people do not know themselves or like, I don't know why I'm angry or I don't know why I don't like this. Okay, but why don't you know you? If you don't know, so how should I know? So getting to know oneself, it's deep, it's hard, but it's awesome. Yeah, it, I want to like, like, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is, <laughs> you know, one of the things we do on the, on the podcast is we offer our, our listeners actionable advice that they can take away immediately this little Patricia manual that you just talk about, like, <laughs> like when you work with somebody, this is like amazing. I mean, we call it the Patricia manual. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I mean, have you ever, I haven't, I wish that I had bosses that sat me down, you know, like when we first started working together and saying like, this is what I like. This is what I don't like. This is what Here's triggers how to work me. with me. <laughs> oh my gosh. How helpful would that be? I was thinking the same thing, Susan, if you, but Patricia made a great point. You've got to know yourself first well yes. enough. So you got yeah. to spend some time in probably that discomfort of who am I really? Cause if we keep ourselves super busy, we don't have time to sit there and go, Oh, this really yeah. makes me angry when this happens, or we don't have time to know ourselves really in depth. And taking that time to know ourselves is seems like tip number one for the leaders, right? Taking the time, invest nope. in yourself, knowing exactly. yourself. Exactly, no podcast, no music, really you and your thoughts. That's hard, but it's worth it. 
Yeah. And in nature is a plus, right? Yes. Um, and then the second part of that, because this breaks down into multiple tips in my mind, the second part of that is create your, your manual, your owner's manual that you can hand to somebody and say, you want to work well with me? Here's what you need to know. Yeah. Those, are, those are great tips for, for people. That doesn't make, mean they're easy though, Patricia. I think that's a really important point that you brought up is like, yeah. it can be very hard to do that. It can be, but I'm sure maybe many of the listeners are also, we know people like when a coworker shares with you, oh, you know, I don't know, be always on time. He's super angry if you're one minute late, for example. Mm -hmm. It's great that a coworker tells you that, but why couldn't my, in this case, the boss tell me like, hey, you know, punctuality is super important for me. Don't be one minute late. We're starting sharp. Okay, done deal. Easy, I know it. Let's go. Yeah, I, you know, boy, this was, I mean, I could tell stories about this for here till the end of time. Exactly <laughs> what you said. There would, you know, go, working in the corporate world over the years, we did exactly that. We even had notes. So we had bosses manuals that yeah. said, I mean, even to the point where make sure that he has like M&Ms because <laughs> if he doesn't get his M&Ms, he's cranky. Yeah. I mean, seriously. I know who you're talking about. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, seriously. And you think about it in my mind, I'm thinking, and you know, I, I, I did, I was not, my job description was not M&M getter, no, but, but, but it made I, easier in the end. It totally did. You know, and then when somebody else would come in, I'd say like this and like, you know, make sure you get the notes or whatever, you know, I mean, it was uh, ridiculous actually, when you think about it. And so uh, cause nobody should have to do that. I yeah. mean, we, we need to be, empath we need to have empathy, uh, and we need to accommodate people, all of us, just because we're human, but not to that unbalanced point. And we need to take responsibility as leaders for our own manual and communicating to other people, you know, just because of re we respect people. Well, there's something else that's popping up for me and you use the word empathy, Susan, and so say a leader is enlightened enough to know themselves well and can say to their employees, okay, I'm new here. I'm your new leader. Here's the, how best to work with me. There's a second side to that. You know, many people would just say, hey, here's how I want things to be my way or the highway, right? And then that would be it. It's not about just that. It's about saying, here's how I work best with people or you can work best with me. What Just does that look like for energy. you? Yeah. What does that look like for you, Patricia? What does that look like oh, for good. you, Susan? Get to know them a little bit. Yes. And so you can work well together, not just how they can work well with the. Right. Leader, not right? just a one, one sided thing. Oh my gosh. You know, this is, I mean, could you imagine what the workplace would be like if everybody kind of did this? I mean, well, in my opinion, it would be awesome. That's why I do it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but well, one thing I also want to share is Susan, when you say actually it's ridiculous because you were not hired to be an m, &M getter, right? <laughs> At the same time, being a leader means so many people are like, okay, you're a leader means like you, I don't know, work more, you lead people. Yes. But I always compare it a little bit to, to let's say, school or kindergarten. It means like you're there for hearing what's their problem. I don't know, miss their wife's or husband's birthday. Oh, this is bad. Or this didn't happen. Whatever. So that's the thing you are also, that's a super important part. And people always believe, I have the feeling, yeah, do it on the side. And you know a little bit of talking with them. No, it's so important. And I mean, you know it, of course, to really have that, that bond and that good relationship and listen to them. and. So another, I don't want to say advice, I, I, who am I to give an advice or to share advice, right? But what I love to do is whenever I start with a new team, first, I get to know each and every one of them and really have a call or a walk. And they can tell me everything they are upset about, like really everything, like no filter, let everything out. And there's nothing, no bad blood or at all. It's just like, let it all out. And if it's out, let's restart. How can we change this? And how can we have a good start? And yeah, so that's something I like as well address, like the 
bad stuff is a big word, but you know what I mean? Like the things that upset them and don't make them happy. So it's not, it seems ridiculous, but it's so important. It, it, no, well, and if you had to do a shorthand of that, it's like connection through listening, right? You listen, you allow them a platform to share with you yeah. and you listen to them. And yeah. that creates connection with coworkers, whether it's boss employee totally. or just peers, right? It, it creates connection with the people. But Susan, only I think if I stepped on you. Follows. Oh, exactly, Patricia. Only if something follows. Yeah. Right. Well, what I what was coming up for me, it's about being a whole person. Yes. You know, yeah. we can we can't really define like divide ourselves into here's work Susan, here's home Susan, here's parent Susan, here's friend Susan. You know, it's uh we are whole people, and when yes. we see each other as whole people and allow us to be whole people. I mean, we feel better. We can contribute more. We're not, we're not we're not doing this in our brain, you know, trying to trying to be be these different personas. Um, we're just being ourselves. Totally. And it's whenever somebody told me like, oh, you should be like this or you should be like that. I'm like, okay, bring only work, Patricia. And the other person said yes. Then I replied, okay, but you know that I don't know, 50, 60, 70, maybe 80% of myself is not here. So it's just saying it's only like 20% of power, 20% of motivation, 20% of creativity, whatever it is. So I totally share your belief. Yeah. We're always one person, like 100%. And of course it's the balance, right? If somebody tells me, oh, you know, I don't know, my rabbit is sick. Yeah, okay, sorry to hear that. But yeah, you know, that's not the biggest part that should it take up here so it's all about let's share it but also focus on the work stuff yeah wow right i want to go back to something you said to patricia about um uh people telling you how you should show up or telling you what you should do or you know what's important to them of course or the business um and it's it's really the responsibility of each person to be able so that they don't reach burnout, to be able to say, what about that works for me, you know, in their own head and examine, is this in alignment with my values? Is this, yes. is this job a good fit for me? Is this, and then to take steps to adjust it so that they don't burn out. Mm -hmm. And all too often yeah. I'll have clients come to me and say, say, well, I don't have time to focus on me right now because I've got all this other stuff going on. And um, I said, and what do you think is going to happen if you do take some time to focus on you? Well, I'm going to get even further behind and they may fire me and blah, blah, blah. I said, what do you think is going to happen if you don't take time to focus on you? Because it's the same bad thing as that they're worried mm -hmm. about happening, right? And so it's, uh, we live in a world where there's no shortage of people telling us what we should be doing <laughs> or how we should be showing up or should act. Right. And I love the wisdom of the advice you shared to listen to yourself. What's important to you inside? What's important to keep you healthy and happy and thriving? Actually, it's super interesting what you just shared, Debbie, because just today I had a talk with a um well actually he's a client but it feels more like a business partner and it was exactly the same feeling like oh you know I cannot focus on myself there's so many stuff going on and I have to do this and this and all of that and I was like okay if you have so many meetings and so many things you really want to take care of then why don't you try to take one day per week off like it's called for me a no meeting Wednesday which obviously is not today because it's a Wednesday and we're going to meet here. But <laughs> I used to do it on a Wednesday, which is really a no meeting Wednesday. So I do not have a call. I do not have an online meeting. I do not have an offline meeting. And that's just the day when I'm able to do all the stuff I need to do to check off my to-do list to, to get it, yeah, not fall behind. And I know that it's not super easy. And again, that's a test task. And even if you have one or two meetings, it's fine. It's not always to be at a 100% solution or a nothing. Even if you're able of, I don't know, having one or two 
no meeting Wednesdays per month, it's already a lot. And you might already be able to focus on yourself. So never see it as a yes or no. There's such a big gray area in the middle. Just, just try it out. Yeah, absolutely. That's great advice. Um, I remember, and it's been a long time since I did this. So I, Susan, there's her third piece of advice for our listeners. Um, but I used to do that myself. I used to have one day that I designated as not going to have any meetings and I'm just going to focus on all the actions I have. Therefore, it didn't keep me working a lot of hours a whole day after I'd worked a whole day just to get the actions done, right? So I yeah. had time to to do that. I'm going to I'm going to re-implement that, Patricia, after talking to you, you here today. Wow. What an honor yeah. that you implement something I see. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely. the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. You know what it's bringing up for me too, because uh, you know the, our podcast is is talking about leadership excellence and you know what is a leader. What it, what that's bringing up for me because this this idea of you know my time is not my own and I've got all these obligations and I want to do it and you know there's but really the most powerful leaders that I have experienced and ones that I admire own their own time. They have their boundaries and they are very clear on them and they're confident about that and people respect it. Yes. So it's powerful when I think about that, because I know I often do not do that. You know, I let the noise of the world and people asking me, you know, and I will, I will let them permeate my boundaries and, but it's really own my own time. And my time is defined by my values, my mission and goals in life. and. And that's what my like guiding North star is. It's like you always tell the story, Susan, about being on an airplane and the safety briefing, they say, put your own oxygen mask on before you help someone else with it. It's that it's, if you don't have boundaries and you're not, even if you have boundaries and you're not honoring them, then you're going to be burned out or not able to help other people because you didn't renew yourself. Right. Well, and we're so attracted to those people, those leaders who have those boundaries. And that's it. Sometimes, I'm sure you heard this as well. People say like, oh, you know, if I have boundaries or tell someone else my boundaries, oh no, they are not going to like me anymore or they don't want to work with me anymore. This rarely happens. And if it happens, then maybe these are not the right people for you, really. Right. Because every person <laughs> should have and know their boundaries. And just today yeah. I shared a reel on social media, which said every giver should know their boundaries because a taker doesn't know and doesn't have them. Right, right. Again, oh, say, say that again, Patricia. Say that again in case anybody <laughs> missed it. Every giver needs to know their boundaries because the takers, they don't know or they don't have them. And again, just like how to relax, how to recharge, it's up to me. It's my decision. I have to do it. It's not that I can say to somebody else, oh, you know, please give me a break or please send me to go recharge. Please send me to holidays. No, it's really up to yourself and you can and you even must. And that's a tough word. That's a hard word, but it's only up to you. You must decide Do you want to recharge? Do you, I don't know, want to have an evening off? Do you want to go on holidays? Whatever is it, it is, it's up to every one of ourselves. And that's something I was quite good at when I was young. And then through my experience, I really went totally the wrong way until I learned that again, it's up to me. And I say, that's my boundary. I have to take care of my boundary. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I compare it to a garden. I say, every person has their own garden. And you can have, I don't know, a meadow in there. You can have flowers in there. You can even grow some veggies in there. You can plant trees in there, whatever it was. You can decide, is there a fence? Is there maybe a door? If there's no door, then nobody may come in. If there's a door, they can knock and ask you to come in. 
And if they just rush through and I don't know, destroy all your veggies because they just ran through your garden, then you can say, hey, stop. You know, it took me so much time, so much effort to take care of this. And you just run through and think that I have time, that I'm available. But don't you see, I was busy. And don't you see what you just destroyed, what I built up. And when people struggle with having or showing their boundaries, that's what I tell them. So what's your garden? Imagine your garden. And when you feel like there's a person who's just walking through your garden and you work and work and work again, and it still doesn't work out, tell them that your garden, that's your fence and build a door for them, or maybe even not. <laughs> Depends on the person. <laughs> <laughs> Only certain people yes. get the passcode. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, but again, it's up to everyone, like myself, yourself. Yeah, it's our choice. Yeah. It's our choice. And it's therefore our personal power, right? And if we totally. don't enforce that, we're giving it away. We're giving it away mm -hmm. to other people because we're saying, hey, okay, I don't need time to recharge. I don't need time to do these things I love. I'll just keep slogging away at this and they're just going to keep taking because as you said, they have no boundaries, right? Exactly. So yeah. it's, it's a great tip for any person, but especially leaders to understand that it's our responsibility as individual to set those boundaries and to respect them. Mm -hmm. Totally. Well, and as leaders, we can model for the people who we are leading um, on what healthy boundaries look like. And we need to respect their boundaries. Back to your point, Debbie, we need to work together. Yes. Um, and that's, I think that's a responsibility of an excellent leader. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. This is like Susan said earlier, we could talk about this for a long, 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 long time. <laughs> but that brings us to a good, maybe uh, last question place for today. So Susan, if you don't have one teed up, I've got one ready for Patricia. You, I go for it, Debbie. Okay. So Patricia, given what, where you are now in life and what you know now, if you could only give one piece of advice to every person listening out there, what would it be? Listen to yourself. That actually just came out of my gut right now. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly what we talked about earlier. Really listen to yourself. And it's about balance. And I cannot emphasize this enough. It's not about only listen to yourself and do not care what others say. Because other people, they might give you a hint. They might help you. You know, they might give you a little nudge in a in a, in a, in a good way. So don't be ignorant. I don't say be ignorant, but just listen to yourself and do not only listen to others. Do listen to yourself and to others and combine these two. And people will really enjoy being with usually, I think everybody can check this out for themselves. Usually are people who know themselves, listen to themselves, but also listen to what other people say or even offer or need. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Excellent advice. You've shared so many great tips with people here today. Patricia, thank you for being with us again. And I'm thank sure you, so you will be a regular guest on our podcast. Yes. <laughs> um, as we close up today, uh, Susan and I wanted you to know something about a program we're getting ready to run. Leading Through Change is a multi-module program, and it includes self-paced guided reflection exercises, which may help you get in touch with yourself like we've talked about with Patricia here today, plus facilitated peer group sessions focused on the participants' leadership challenges. We at Seasons Leadership offer a leading through change program each quarter because we think it's a really valuable tool for all leaders in these times of overwhelm and these times of tremendous change. And so we're often asked when people see that offering from us, well, what is it really? And it's, it's kind of hard to describe because it's so unique. This program was created by co-founders of Reflection Circles, Kate Phillips-Kaiser, Bettina Rama, and Catherine Twiddell. Their overall mission is building confidence, capability, and connection in a complex world. Together, they bring their strong backgrounds in leadership development, clinical and organizational psychology, group systems, business and technology, to develop the series and programs that are offered through Reflection Circles. 
Leading Through Change is one of those programs. Um, Susan and I have both done the program individually. Susan was an overachiever. She's done it multiple times. <laughs> multiple and times. we found it so helpful that we are offering it through seasons. Um, but because it's hard to explain and sometimes takes some back and forth uh, discussion, we decided to offer our patrons on Patreon a live event where they can experience a mini version of it, a taste of the leading through change. And that's going to be held on July 11th, 2023 at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So put it on your calendars. If you're not yet a patron, you can sign up on patreon.com and that's spelled p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash seasons leadership to become a member and join the conversation. We'd love to connect with you as we build our community of excellent leaders. Well, thank you listeners for joining us for the Seasons Leadership Podcast. We hope you take these words of excellence with you on your leadership journey. Remember, no matter what level or role, you can become more than you are today, and the world needs you. When you fulfill your unique purpose, you strengthen the organizations and the communities in which you live and work. Thank you for being a part of our positive leadership change. And tune in next time for more leadership excellence conversations and insights like we did today with Patricia. Until next time, we are sending you positive vibes for new energy, creativity, and opportunity to elevate your thinking as we transition into the season of summer. Thank you.